Hi there, Johnny here from johnnylipsomstudios.co.uk and welcome to Studio One 5.1. All right, so here we are in Studio One 5.1. And uh, let's get to these brand new features that are super duper awesome. So the first thing we're gonna look at is we're gonna look at the new score uh, editor options. So the score printing and the new layout options. So to access those, the first thing you need to do is you need to select an event. So let's double click this event here. And this opens up the editor and there's all of these extra options as well. So you can view the track, you can view the symbols, and you can also uh, change your layout options and your page layout, the paper size and all of that. You can show tempo changes. You can, um, you can change this layout style. You can have it as pages. And so you have your title and the composer there, which is cool, and the tempo marking. And this is essentially, this is the electric piano part, which is just the right hand. Uh, we, and this piece is not finished yet by any stretch of the imagination. It's just a little um, eight bar loop right now. Uh, so yeah, and you can, you can view it as just a single track as well. Uh, so let's say our electric piano player is only playing the first eight bars. And then for the rest of the tune, they are resting for 75 bars. Uh, and this is a, what you would call a part. So if you... Uh, have like a tenor sax part or a trumpet part or some other part or a violin part as part of a symphonic work um, then you kind of have rests where um, they need to be which is very very cool you can um, check these buttons out up here for the different views so this is kind of the continuous view that everyone is familiar with and then um, that's the page view and as you can see there you can scroll across to your second page which is very cool. And then your uh, single track. So this is your part. And then of course you've got this wonderful print button here. And when you click this, it just brings up a print dialog. And you choose your printer and then you hit print and away you go. Job done. It's as easy, easy as that. So if you're printing out a, a part for a performer who is in your studio ready to go and they would rather not look at the screen or they can't look at the screen because of where the mic is placed in your studio, then this is a great little option for you. Uh, you can just print out the part for them. Dead easy. All right, so that's pretty much that feature. So we'll close the editor there. Uh, the next one we're going to look at is the retrospective recording, because this is exceedingly cool. I actually love this and spent a lot of time mucking about with this. So let's uh, pull up a new song. So we'll go to this one over here that I've already prepared. And I've got uh, a presence piano set up here. And you can see here, this is retrospective recording um, button here. And as you can see, it is automatically read, ready to record. And there are a couple of ways in which you can, uh, once you've actually finished doodling, you can, you can recall it and it will appear as an event, as you'll see in just a second. So you can either press this button or you can press shift and number pad star. Uh, that's what it's assigned to at the moment. You can obviously change that assignment if you wish. Um, but I'm just going to press this button for now. All right, so I'm going to play something over on my on my uh, keyboard, and uh, then I will press this button and show you just how cool this really is. Check this out. Or some other complete and utter nonsense, whatever it might be, and then you just hit this button. Doink. And there it is. And it's even included the long kind of silence that at the beginning whilst I was sorting myself out and talking to you guys. So I can zoom that back up. And here we go. <laughs>
And the cool thing about that retrospective recording feature is that it's kind of running in the background uh, from the time that you kind of initiate the song. Uh, it, it kind of just hovers there and it captures anything you play. Uh, and then you can just literally just go and kind of edit it uh, down like I just did there. So that is very, very cool. That's retrospective recording. Very, very handy. All right. So the next one that we're going to look at is the uh, track channel search filter options. So let's go back over to this song over here and we'll close out the editor. We don't need that right now. So let's go and look at the track list. And here we've got our track list and this is filter feature at the bottom here. So let's say I only want to see the trumpet parts or trumpet tracks. So I just type in here, Trump it. And there we go. All, all the trumpet tracks that are in this song are now in view and everything else is hidden. That is extremely cool. Uh, and of course you can you can change that to anything you want. So we've got bongos in here. Let's get the bongos in, in focus. There we go. Bongos. Bam. There you go. Bongos are in focus. Uh, and so that's really cool from the um, event view perspective. But what about from the mixer? Let's get the, the mixer console open and I'm going to close that for right now and come on to that in just a second. So let's say I only want to see, um, let's see the roads. So we go R H O D E S and there it is. The roads channel is the only one that is now in view. So I can do whatever I want on just this particular channel. Same might be if you've got like seven or eight guitars and you want to focus on just balancing just your guitars. You can type guitars into there, into that little filter box, and it will show up just the guitars. It's very, very cool, very handy. I will be definitely making a lot of use of this particular feature. It's exceedingly cool. Uh, so the next one we will look at since we are here is we will look at um, this feature to do with the expanded uh, instrument view. So if I click on the instrument view here, uh, we've now got these new extended and compact uh, views. Now what you're used to seeing in Studio One 5 is this, and in fact in every other version of Studio One, this is what you've seen for all of your instruments loaded into the instrument rack, but now you can expand this view and it will tell you what patches are loaded into each instrument. And then there's this little line here. Well, what's this? Well, this tells you how much CPU load is on each one of these instances. Now, with this particular song, you're not going to see anything because it's just presence. Presence is super lean, super smart, and uh, hardly does any damage to CPU at all. So if I just play a little bit of this track, and you'll see that these just don't do anything. But if I was to be using uh, more CPU hungry instruments, um, and there are many and various of them out there, uh, then you would see uh, these uh, peaking a little bit and it would show you, hey, there's, there's a little bit of CPU activity going on on those instruments, which is a handy little view. So that's pretty cool. Uh, I'm going to close that because I don't want to see that. And I'm going to close that because I don't want to see that either for right now. And I'm also going to close that. All right, so we're back to kind of how I like to see my mix of you. Okay, so we will move on to looking at the combined uh, timeline ruler options and the, uh, the time and key signature tracks, which are new. So let's get the console out of the way. So we're used to being able to see the arrange of you and we're used to being able to see um, just the bars and beats, but now, with this funky little box here, all of the rulers, because you used to have like the chord track, the arranger track, and all of that kind of in a line over here. Well, to save space, they've all been collapsed into this one box here. So you just click on this box and then you check off what you want to see. So if you want to see the tempo track, for example, you can have the tempo track open. Uh, or if you want to see 
uh, if you want to not see the extended ruler, you can close that. But the extended ruler is very cool, and the extended ruler you can have it in seconds, you can have it in samples, or you can have it in frames, or you could have it in bars. But why would you have it in bars when the default one is already in bars? Because uh, you'd have it in bars and then bars again. So um, unless perhaps you wanted to show a different quantized value, um, that would be the only uh, reason I might have uh, an additional ruler with uh, um, additional values. Uh, so yes, yeah, so that second ruler is very, very handy. The arranger track we already know about. The combined signature track is here, and you can insert a time signature, or you can delete a selected signature. So you could put in a different time signature or a different key signature at any point. So let's say here at bar 33, let's say we wanted to insert a key signature. You just right-click this track and these options become available to you. Insert time signature or insert key signature. So let's say at bar 33, we wanted to go to the key of D major, you just insert, you press this, like this, and you select something from your, your uh, Wheel of Fortune, and away you go. It's not really called the Wheel of Fortune. Uh, the Circle of Fifths. <laughs> I like to call it the Wheel of Fortune just because I'm silly. Um, but yeah, you could just put that in there and it will show your, your key change. Or if you've got a, a different... Uh, time signature you want to go to at this particular point. Let's say you wanted to go to 7-8. Well, again, you right-click, you insert the time signature, and then the, dime, the dialog box appears, and you can change the numerator and denominators to whatever values you, you need. Uh, I don't need to do this for this song, so we're going to keep it in 4-4, but I could have 5-4, 7-8, 12-8, 13-8, 15-8, 19-16, 19-16, whatever I wanted to do, I can put that in here and the ruler would automatically adjust. And then, of course, I can f later down the line change it to 4-4 again if I needed to. So that is extremely cool. Uh, what are we going to look at next? We are going to look at the Global Tracks uh, ed um, view in the editor. Now, this is very handy. If I go back to the editor view, uh, except I don't have a track selected. So here we go. Now we've got the road selected. So these are for reference only. You cannot actually edit these. You cannot put in like time signature changes or key signature changes uh, in the editor view um, because the time signature and th all of those, they are global to the whole song, not just on a per track basis. They are global. So you have to change those up here because this is where the global um, uh, signature and all of that are. Uh, so these are for reference only. So you've got the arranger track down here for reference only. You can't change any of this. Okay, so that is a pretty cool little addition to the editor. I like that. Uh, Empire and Pedalboard. Let's have a look at Empire and Pedalboard. So for this, we will go over to our, uh, our new song over here. And we will go to Effects. And we will go and grab Empire. Let's just pull this down to save ourselves a little bit of time. We'll back that in there. And then we'll also go down to pedal board, element OP, pedal board, where art thou? Pedal board is here as well. We'll drag that in and we'll set up a pedal board. Let's say we go for uh, phase EP. There we go. Perfect. Now, this is cool. I can pin this over here. Then I can go over to this guy over here we'll get the console open and we will collapse that but we'll also edit it so we've got this open and they kind of don't quite fit on my screen but that's okay um, because really in this in this view we only want the the uh, stomp box area open let's say on this guitar track I like the phaser that I've got set up over here well here's a cool thing I can drag it and I can drop it right there. Or I like the Tube Dreamer on this channel, so I want it over here. I can drag and drop it. It's great. I can swap these stomp boxes around as I like. Uh, that is a very powerful little feature. So let's close those out. That to me is pretty cool if you're a guitar player and you've got different guitar channels, especially with the new console view where you can filter out just the guitars. You can swap these things about from one guitar to another, as you might want to do. 
All right, so let's take a look at the clip gain um, feature. Let's go over to uh, the Cassiopeia file song for this, and we'll go back to our roads, and we'll right-click this guy, and you'll see now that we have the gain envelope button, and this is very cool. So when I've got this active, I can press this bypass button, so I can make my changes to my roads part, and uh, I can hit bypass if I want to compare what it sounds like with and without those changes. So that is a very cool, nifty little feature that they added. Well done, uh, PSL, for adding that in. And I think we've just about covered everything. Uh, the only thing we haven't looked at is the show page and the external instrument support for the show page. Um, I will cover that in an, an additional video because uh, I need to show you um, in a little bit more detail how to set that up. That video will come out uh, later this week, um, and I will also look at it in a little bit more detail, and all of these features in a little bit more detail on my Sunday Night Live show right here on the Johnny Lichman Studios YouTube channel. Uh, so this Sunday at 6 p.m. Central Time, which is when I do my normal Sunday Night Live, we will kick it uh, over completely and utterly devoted to Studio One 5.1, and I can go over these features in a little bit more detail with you guys if you want to see a little bit more detail, because I have definitely rushed through this um, just to make sure this video is nice and compact. So there you have it. I hope you found this useful and helpful, and I will see you on the next video or on Sunday Night Live at Sunday, 6 p.m. Central Time, See you then.